Amen. Amen. Um, do you have one of these? What is this? Pants. And do you have, do you own one of these? All right. If you don't have it, is it easily you can afford to have one of these? Huh? Yes. It's not a trick question, you know. <laughs> and and uh, why do you have this? This is very handy dandy, right? You can write something, memos, or write a letter. Nowadays, nobody really uses pencils to write or anything. But uh, um, we use um, cell phones and uh, computers and uh, et cetera. But this is uh, still handy dandy, right? And we could afford if we want to. But let me ask you, do you have one of those? Huh? <laughs> Why not? It's expensive, right? Huh? But do you know, do you know that, the, what do you call it? Lead of these pencils, these pencils, and those, one of those are from the made of uh, same stuff, right? It's called what? Carbon, right. Why is this pencil soft and cheap and uh, those one of made of carbon is so expensive? Huh? What's the difference? Pressure, that's right. This pencil, the, the, the lead, out of the rocks that ha have not been through any pressure, and uh, it's a young rock uh, in carbon, but one of those uh, right, went through a lot of pressure and a long, long time. And that's what it makes beautiful, shiny, more valuable, right? Whenever I see those diamonds just melt my heart. How about you? <laughs> huh? You know, this is a side story, though don't tell my husband. And when he was uh, um, about to propose to me about 30 years ago, and he brought some magazines and, you know, the different uh, uh, ring style and size and all that. So he was just uh, hinting on what kind of style that I would uh, love to have it if uh, uh, he is going to propose to me. But um, my eyes land on what? Big is the one. And I noticed his heart just dropped. And, and, and then, uh, and then he, he says this, you know, your fingers are so skinny and your hands are so tiny, small. If you have a large stone on your finger, then uh, people may think it's uh, fake and uh, it doesn't look good on you. So I think this small size, <laughs> this will fit perfect on you. And I says, I don't care what people, other people say or think. I want a big one. If you want to marry me, you've got to get me a big one. <laughs> Guess what I got? The one he could afford, <laughs> small one. And he says, size doesn't matter. Thought it counts, right? Now I can't wear it anymore because my finger got bigger. So I said, I need a bigger one. And he goes, resize the ring. <laughs> we love, I, mean, I love, every time I go to a Costco or anywhere and when there is a jewelry shop, I got to see. I got to see, oh, it's a, even though I don't have it, I, I can't afford to have it, but it just melts my heart. How about you? No? Why am I talking about diamonds this morning? Is anybody going to get married? Right? We, we exchange wedding rings and we use diamonds uh, often. Um, the, the, one of the reasons is that diamond lasts forever. It's unbreakable. Right? And it withstands, uh, it symbolizes that it endures lots of pressures. So between uh, love for one another, 
um, you, call, you can call endure the pressures of life, the hardships of life, uh, trials of life, you can withstand. This is symbolizing. That's why I think the, uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, that people use uh, exchange rings with diamonds. Why am I talking about diamonds? Huh? Our church-wide Bible study series, we start resuming, right? It's a lesson eight. And it's from 2 Thessalonians chapter one. Now, this Second, Second Thessalonians chapter one is talking, <coughs> excuse me, is talking about people who went through hardship, who is going through hardship, and yet they kept their faith and they uh, fought the good fight and they were continuing uh, running their race. So Apostle Paul wrote a letter to them and to clear, clear some misconcept, misunderstanding, and uh, encourage them continue to walk uh, by faith and continue to increase their love for one another. But our title, as you're going to study this week, says this. How can I be sure that I will go to heaven. And this chapter has nothing to do with the go to heaven seems apparently and it, it, at first glance. As you remember, we read the Bible passages this morning, right? And it doesn't talk about heaven. And why is that? Because you remember the first Thessalonians were written to them and, and they were young Christians, right? And they were mostly concerned about Jesus' second coming, his return, and, and they thought, what, he will return in their lifetime, but some of those, uh, their loved ones died before he returns, so they were worried, and they were concerned, and they all believed that, uh, that when Jesus returned, they're going to be raptured by Christ, and riding on a crowd, and entering into, marching into heaven, that's why this Bible, the title is that, um, clarifying what is it in page. Now, he didn't say much, but look at this. If God asks you, we want to be clear in this. If God asks you, why should I let you in? Hmm? Why should I let you in heaven? When Jesus comes back, why should I rapture you? What would be your answer? Oh, well, I sacrifice my life for you. I suffer through all, endure through all. Lord, I serve you. I give tithes and offerings, and I was faithful to you. Would that be your answer? What would be the really good answer? I love you, huh? I love you Lord. Yes. And I believe in you. By salvation comes by faith through God's grace, grace alone. Because you said so, right? Because you have promised. I accepted your son, and that is why I am entering into heaven. Not the other way around. Because we received grace, undeserved grace, unearned, unpaid for it. Jesus paid for it. So, in gratitude, in appreciation, we do what we do. We try to live life worthy of his sacrifice. That's what Apostle Paul is talking about here. And he was telling them, they, they were going through persecutions, pressures of life, and continue to fight the good fight because, because God has sacrificed his son and he will return until the day he returns. And uh, verse 12, it says what? I pray that the name of Jesus be what? glorified in you, right? Maybe glorified in you and you in him. In other words, 
continue to work on your salvation, not justification, but sanctification, then you will be shine like a diamonds because you endure lots of pressures. Amen? Amen? So how can we then let Jesus be glorified in us and we in him? How can we endure the hardships of life? When we do that, we are going to be like a, shine like a diamond. I tell your neighbor, I am a very expensive diamond. Huh? You, uh, I, I don't think you believe it, right? Huh? Th that is what is going to happen when we fight the good fight, when we keep our faith, and when we finish our race that's set before us. And during the life, we'll go through life, there will be lots of hardships, trials and tribulations. And how can we endure? How can we endure those pressures of life? Right? And I've come up with the two U's, and U and T, but the T easily can, you can easily uh, figure that out. Two U's, maybe U too. But two U's, oops. All right. First of all, let's look at verse 3. Verse 3 says what? Where is the Thessalonians? Verse 3 says this. I give thanks to our God, what? Brothers and sisters, for your faith grow more and more and your love increased, right? When uh, this happened, when this happened, and verse four, right? You persevere persecutions, trials, hardships, right? You endure those things. So what is it telling them and us? The purpose of hardship in our lives, that you go through hardships, trials, and tribulations, it increases your faith. It what increases your love for one another, for your God. Do you agree? What persecutions they went through. Do you remember? Because they live in a sin-sick world. There are many, many gods. And they all practice. If you are blessed, healthy, successful, oh yes. You please your gods and you are approved by your gods. If you go through failures, you go through illness, sickness, and trials and tribulations, oh yes. They say, you are punished by your God. And some Christians still nowadays, they adopt such knowledge into Christianity. One part is uh, maybe true, but the other part is completely wrong, right? God will bless you. When you obey, you trust and obey, right? But God won't punish you. May you may suffer the consequences of your disobedience, but God will never punish you with the illness. God will never punish you with the um, financial disaster whatsoever. Because what? The pun yes, grace, the punishment of our sins already paid by Jesus Christ on the cross over 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. And then this, we have to really let it sink in. Whenever we go through storms of life, hardships of life, it is not being punished by Almighty God. He is a loving God graceful God. 
it is the purpose when God lets you go through hardship, the purpose of it is what? Hmm? To increase your faith, to, 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 to increase your love for God, to ex for you to experience intimate relationship with Almighty God. Those of you who have been through the health issues, I wish I have two hours this morning so I can share my testimonies. Went through, um, going through the battles of illness, of financial situations, or relationships, you know, you wouldn't exchange for anything because you know, though during those times, that you were so close to your Lord God, and you felt his presence, and you heard his voice. Hallelujah. We don't want to change for that, exchange for anything for that. Remember that? The Peter, where is it? Matthew chapter 14. Just, just open the Matthew chapter 14. Peter walked on water. right? It, it says Jesus walked on water, right? But I will say Peter walked on water. Now, you know the whole story, nothing but the truth. So um, I will make it very fast. So after Jesus uh, fed the 5,000 miracles, right, 5,000 uh, people, and then Jesus made uh, disciples who went in a boat and then sent them to uh, uh, across the uh, Sea of Galilee. Now, any seaman knows, any people who lived on island knows that Night, sea is a rougher, rougher than morning sea. And I first experienced when I went to Lahaina, Lanai, Lahaina, Lanai, Lanai, <laughs> for the church business, right? And I, I have a motion sickness, so I got all kinds of uh, um, preventions all over me. And then in the morning, um, it was smooth, and my, I still have nauseousness, but it was okay. But after 2 o'clock, when we returned, I puked. I <laughs> all throughout. So the, 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 whenever I read this uh, passage, you know, dis disciples in the rough sea and uh, you know, turn and toss by the big waves and uh, scared and afraid, and they probably puked all over, you know. But... They saw what Jesus, and thinking that he's ghost, and they were afraid and take heart, and it, it is I, and they didn't recognize the voice of Jesus, but except uh, um, Peter. Peter, it, it, Peter says what? If it is you, Lord, please ask me to come. And so Jesus says, "Come, right?" And Peter <laughs> walked on water for a while, and then what? He sank, right? Uh, and we all remember, right? And it, the Jesus says, oh, you have uh, a little faith. So why did, did you doubt? Right? And Jesus grabbed him. And then what happened? Huh? So we remember in our minds, Peter, you have a little faith. How, why did you doubt? And Peter sank. But Peter was the only one of the disciples who walked on water. Now, when Jesus grabbed him, reached him, and rescued him, what happened afterward? Did uh, Peter swim to the boat? Or did Jesus carry him on his shoulder? No. The Bible, look at the Bible. And in 14, verse 31 and 32, they both, what? Climb into the boat. Do you get this? They both climb into the boat. That means Peter, after rescued, he walked to the boat hand in hand with Jesus. Hallelujah. Because, because they encounter storms at sea. Because we encounter storms of life. Because we are going through the hardships that we get to have an intimate relationship hand in hand with Jesus. That is, a, my friend, purpose of the trials and tribulations in our lives. When we understand the purpose, then we can withstand, we can endure, because James, 
James chapter 1, verse 2 says this. Consider it, what is it? Pure joy, right? Consider it pure joy. Whatever, whenever, what, what kind of, any kind of trials happening in your life. Consider it pure joy because God never let us go through without preparing, without giving us a great intimacy that increase our faith, increase our love for Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, whenever you are going through, what can you do? What should you do? I am trading my sorrows. I'm trading my problems. I'm trading all my illness, sickness. I'm trading all my worries for the joy of the Lord. Amen? And this is what Apostle Paul is telling them. Continue to work out your salvation. Continue to work out, live life worthy of high calling, verse 11. High calling. And verse 12, may Christ be glorified in you, through you, and you in him. And so that you can shine like a diamond. Amen? Amen. So what's the first you going to be? Understand the purpose of a trial. And when you understand, you can be easily trade your problems, your sorrows, your hardship. Amen? Amen? And then second one is a cute one. Second says what? Verse 6. And the verse 6 to uh, uh, 10, it is all about how God's going to uh, pay back those who been wronged by people. And verse 6 says, God is just. God will not let injustice go unpunished, that means, right? God is just. He will pay back to those who troubled you. Hallelujah. Don't you love that? I mean, why would God do that? Because God says, you are mine. Thou shalt not touch mine. If you touch mine, then you will get what you deserve. This is what the Bible says, verses 6 through. So, the Romans chapter 12, verse 19, you all remember, right? God says what? Do not take revenge, right? Leave room for God's avenge. If you get hurt, if you experience injustice, if you are troubled by Satan, by somebody, by anything, what? Do not take matters in your hand and leave room for God. Let God do it. God can do a far better job than any of us can do, right? A little boy was crying and uh, digging up his uh, backyard with a shovel. And uh, Mr. Green, the neighbor, <coughs> excuse neighbor saw him and uh, what's the matter, Jimmy? Why are you crying? Why are you digging up the ground? And Jimmy says, oh, my fish died. And this is going to be the grave for my fish. And Mr. Green says, hey, that, you know, uh, you're digging up too big of a hole for tiny fish. Well, Mr. Green, my fish is in your cat. <laughs> he was going to bury his cat. <laughs> Will he succeed? No. Right? God has far better resources. And God is uh, more powerful than any of us can do. But we like to, what? We like to do it ourselves. And sometimes we wait, but not too long. I mean, the other day, I was driving down to um, Kaoluik, and this one guy was just 
in and out, in and out, just drive me crazy. And I secretly wished that reckless driver should be, what? Well, where's the police, right? He should be got cut. Well, at the down at the bottom, indeed, he got cut. Oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> you learn your lesson, you see. That is, I mean, if you're not, then you are saint. We all want it to be justice to be done right here, right then, right now. But our Bible says what? All the justice, God's justice uh, will prevail. And we only need to uphold his justice. We only need to uphold his righteousness. We only need to trust and obey. O obedience comes uh, upholding uh, justice. Right now, when we look at the world, it seems like a justice, injustice prevail rather than justice. But one day, when he returns, he will punish them by separate them from what? His presence. By separate them with his presence. Do you believe that? Hmm? Do you believe all things going to work together for good to those who love God and who is called according to his purpose? Do you trust that? Do you uphold his justice when everything goes wrong? Do you believe and trust and stand strong on his promises? That's when you can withstand. That's when you can endure injustice happening in your life. Verse 11, look at verse 11. Apostle Paul prayed for uh, those Thessalonians not to re remove the persecutions, not to remove the, the change, the circumstances they are in, but to what? Pray for God's power, work in their lives. We need God's power to uphold his righteousness, he, God's power to to. to uphold his justice because we are trying to swim against our current, swim against our nature. We need God's help to what? To do all righteousness, to prompt every deed by faith. That's what he was praying for them and for us. Remember the, uh, the Bible in Joseph? Joseph, the, the, his brother sold him to what? Slavery. And, but he didn't uh, abandon God or he didn't blame God. And he was focused on God. He was a living, righteous life. He was upholding God's justice. And yes, indeed, God's justice prevailed him. Are you going through some injustice? And this is the word of God saying to you this morning, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapons formed against you will prevail. I will vindicate you. I will vindicate you. And Isaiah 41, 10. What is that? I am your God. I am with you. I will uphold you with my righteous right arms. Do you trust what he has promised? Then you can uphold his justice, his righteousness, his word in, through it all in every situation in your life. Philippians 1.6 says what? Having confidence. I have confidence in God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion 
till the day of Jesus, until he returns. Amen? When you uphold his promises, his justice, his righteousness, then you can be really beautiful, beautiful diamond. Amen? What is the second you? Uphold God's justice, righteousness, God's word, and just trust and simple trust and obey. As you know, Christian, <coughs> Christian life is not, a, what do you say? Bed of roses, right? The hardships, trials, and tribulations falls on faithful Christians, non-faithful Christians, non-believers, and good for offs and between so-so's. It's a fair, no discrimination. Hardships falls on anybody, everybody, lay people and pastor, too, right? And then after um, Easter Sunday service, you know when Easter Sunday comes and uh, all the strangers are uh, coming to worship, right? And uh, one of the strangers uh, says, uh, uh, as they, he asked it, and he goes, hey, Pastor, please pray for my hearing. So Pastor put a hand on his ear and uh, pray fervently and uh, powerfully and may, in the name of Jesus, may these guys' uh, hearing be um, open and, and, uh, and send your healing power and powerful, powerful prayer. After that, Pastor asked, how's your hearing? Well, the guy says what? My hearing is tomorrow. <laughs> You're so slow. <laughs> so should, this, should Pastor stop praying fervently, honestly, hard for anybody who asks him to pray? No. You, you fail. You fail. You do good, you fail sometimes, you've got to continue to keep on well, upholding your core. You know, our Lord Jesus called each one of us to go and make disciples of all nations. And um, I know so many of us have failed. It doesn't mean you got to sit down, don't never get up. You can get up. And try again, right? Because all authorities in heaven is given to me. Therefore, I send you. Therefore, you are my ambassadors. I send you and I will be with you. We've got to serve God no matter what with the humility and with the trust and obey. Amen? And this uh, lesson will teach you that hardship, trials, and tribulations are necessary, necessity for our spiritual journey to make us shine more, to make us stronger, to make our what, faith grow, our love for one another increase, our love for God to increase. Think of when you go through trials. Our life is like a caterpillar <laughs> in a cocoon. They struggle. They struggle. If you try to speed up and cut it, what happens? It will die. Right? We need metamorphosis process so that we can be like a beautiful butterfly. We can be like a beautiful, shining, what? A diamonds! Look at one another. Yes. Say that. Yes. I am really shining diamond. I will be really shining diamond. More valuable, more expensive, and very unique bright shining. I will be. I will be. Because, because how can you be? Because you are going to what? 
When you go through the, 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 the trials and tribulations and hardship, you will understand the purpose of trials and hardships. So you will trade your sorrows, your problems. And second, you will uphold God's justice. Right? That's when God's going to bless your socks off. Amen? Amen. You're so beautiful. You're sparkling like diamonds. And make my heart just 